Wow. Britain, Britain. <laughs> you guys, good. It's a good thing that we realize. Hey, don't get me wrong. Don't, don't, I'm not excited. <laughs> Hi guys, it's your island girl and I'm back with another reaction video for you today and today we are reacting to when Britain nuked America twice. Now this one kept coming in the comment section and I want to see what this is all about. I have no clue what I'm getting myself into straight up. I do not do research about videos that I'm given to react to guys. Just wanted to put that heads up. I go in blindly. I go in neutral. I go in the unknown. Min, I don't, me don't know nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> me don't know nothing. All right? I do pause my videos, so I'll put the link in the description below if you'd like to check out this video undisturbed. Okay, guys? So, I did, um... Uh, Britain ended slavery how Britain ended slavery and this one was in the comment section on the double and I also did facts about slavery that never mentioned in school and this also came in the comment section I'll also link those videos in the description below so with all the jibber jabber I'm going to guess did they should I guess what got nuked twice But they have always been allies, so. Interesting. You know what? Let's get into this video. Here. Oh, how could I forget? How could I forget? Huh? If you're new here, welcome. Come on in. Wrap back. Put a smile on your face and enjoy this reaction with your island girl. To all my regular smegglers, my day one, my sweetie pies, my sweetie poos. Thank you for always being here with your girl. Don't forget to do what? Rock back. Put that smile on your face and enjoy. And let me know what you think in the comment section. All right? Here we go. Now. In the 1960s, Great Britain nuked the United States not once, but twice. Okay. Fortunately for all concerned, the attacks were only training exercises, but so embarrassing oh. were these attacks that they were hidden from the American public for about 50 years, as well as being strenuously denied to the American press for decades. Y y you know why I pause the video, don't it? You know why I pause. Of course they're going to hide it. Embarrass. Embarrass they would be, huh? <laughs> as far as America was concerned, its defenses were 99% effective. <laughs> but in simulated attacks, Royal Air Force bombers managed to penetrate U.S. airspace to launch nuclear attacks on New York City and several other important urban centers. Wow. Before I tell you how, a word from our sponsor. How wow. did the British manage to penetrate the world's most heavily defended airspace? Please tell me how. Here we go. The answer is surprisingly simple and consists of two Here words. We go, guys. Avro Vulcan. The Vulcan first flew in 1952. The team that created it, led by Roy Chadwick, who had designed the famous Lancaster Heavy Bomber of World War II. A jet-powered, tailless, delta-wing, high-altitude strategic bomber, oh, wow. the Vulcan was the backbone of Britain's nuclear airborne deterrent during most of the Cold War, serving from 1956 until retirement in 1984. Baby look good, boy. Don't get me wrong. It looks good. The Falcon. Listen to that name. The Falcon. Huh. 
Balkan. This is the story of Exercise Sky Shield, when Britain nuked its closest ally, exposing how the Soviet Union could have done the same for real. Dang. In 1960, the United States decided to run the largest test of its air defences in history. Exercise Sky Shield 1 occurred on the 10th of September 1960, and all commercial air traffic over the US and Canada was grounded, amounting to a thousand US commercial flights and 700 general aviation aircraft, plus a further 31 foreign flights due to land in North America. So hold up, you're telling me that they were able to hide all of this. Can you imagine so many flights grounded and nobody thought anything of it? Wow. The U.S. Strategic Air Command would launch B-52 Strato Fortresses and B-47 Strato Jets to simulate a massive Soviet nuclear bomber force approaching North America from north and south. 360 U.S. interceptor aircraft stood ready to defeat these enemy aircraft, which numbered 310. Among those 310 aircraft were eight Royal Air Force Vulcan B-2 nuclear bombers. A flight of four flew from Scotland, while the other four launched from the British territory of Bermuda in the Atlantic Ocean. Okay. The American plan was to detect these enemy bombers by radar and other early warning systems. And then they would be intercepted and destroyed in simulated attacks by US jet fighters and missile batteries. The attacking bombers split their attacks between high and low altitude. The defending fighters did very well against the stratojets and strato fortresses, intercepting many of them. But the Vulcans proved more elusive opponents. The Vulcan flew at the highest altitude of the simulated Soviet oh. bombers, cruising at 56,000 feet. Oh, it's cruising at 57,000 feet. So that's how they. Uh, that's how it went undetected. It went higher was not in their radar, wow. One was successfully intercepted at this altitude over Goose Bay, Labrador by a United States Air Force F-101 Voodoo. But the other seven Vulcans all managed to penetrate American airspace to launch simulated bombing attacks on US what? cities. They then turned around and landed at Stephenville, Newfoundland. What? What? But you covered this up. I, I understand you don't want to, to get the public in a panic. Well, it, and you wouldn't want to put this out there so your enemies know too. But, but can you imagine the length that they go through to cover this up? So you guys weren't... You were at the top of the notch of the top of the earth. The question was, how had the Vulcan managed it? The answer was their highly advanced electronic countermeasures systems and the Vulcan's amazing maneuverability. Oh. For example, the flight of four aircraft that approached from Bermuda were successful because three of them put up a wall of electronic interference that prevented interception, while the fourth Vulcan carried out a simulated nuclear strike. This was all rather embarrassing for Strategic Air Command, which quickly buried all stories about British bombers having nuked U.S. targets and confidently assured the American public that U.S. air defenses were, as I said, 99% effective. Wow. However, the following year, the Americans invited the RAF to take part in Exercise Sky Shield 2. Perhaps the USAF was determined to show that the Vulcan's previous success was only a fluke, a one-time only event. Sky Shield 2, which occurred on the 14th of August 1961, was an even bigger event than the first one. It caused 2,900 US and Canadian flights to be grounded, affecting 125,000 commercial passengers. So you're telling me you'll do this again one year later? And... Nobody thought about so many flights being grounded. Nobody thought there was something going on. What? 
I wonder what excuse that they gave the public on a whole to say, okay, all these flights were grounded and so many people were, 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 were interesting. But I guess they had jammers, so they couldn't, so, wow. Britain, Britain, <laughs> you guys, good. It's a good thing that we realize. Hey, don't get me wrong. Don't, don't, I'm not excited. <laughs> but you put them to shame, even though they cover it up. <laughs> Why am I laughing about this? It's, this is embarrassing. Of course they would have hit, of course they would have hit it. Because remember, they're the best of the best. Just say. During the exercise, 125 US and British bombers would be pitted against 1,800 fighters and 250 missile sites, and over 200,000 Air Force personnel from the US and Canada. About 16 and a half seconds. Now, continuing. Yeah, but I'm still ready. Ready now. Here they go again. Brace your part here. Come up. Six foot standing by part. Again, eight Vulcan B-2s participated, split again into two flights. One attacking on the northern route from RAF Lossiemouth in Scotland via Canada, and the okay. other four aircraft on a southerly route from Kindley Air Force Base Bermuda. The B-47 Stratojets simulated low-level Soviet bombers. The B-52s would attack between 35,000 and 42,000 feet, while the Vulcans again operated at the highest the altitude, higher. 56,000 feet. Okay, so the Vulcans at the massive really went NORAD, high. NORAD, or North American Air Defense Bunker at Colorado Springs, the U.S. top brass was joined by the RAF's Air Marshal Sir Kenneth Cross of Bomber Command and Sir Wallace Kyle, chief of the RAF Technical Training Command, to monitor the exercise. Just before 2 p.m., U.S. interceptors pounced on the B-52s, approaching at the mid to high altitude level. The Vulcans also came in from the north, and again, due to the Vulcans' high-tech jamming equipment, only one was shot down by an F-101 Voodoo fighter. In fact, oh. large numbers of US fighters were scrambled, but they concentrated almost exclusively on the B-52s. When the Vulcans came over, the interceptors did not have sufficient fuel remaining to climb to 56,000 wow. feet plus and engage them. The surviving three Vulcans conducted their attacks successfully, turned around and landed at Stephenville, Newfoundland. The southern attack force of four Vulcans from Bermuda reached a position 50 miles off the US coast before fighters were scrambled to intercept. Again, three of the Vulcans unleashed an electronic jamming screen that kept the attacking F-102 Delta daggers busy while the fourth aircraft crept round to the north and sneaked through. Yep. This Vulcan proceeded to land at Plattsburgh Air Force Base in New York. If this had been a real attack, New York City could have been reduced to a smoking, Wiped irradiated out. hole in the ground. Wow. You can come in to do this later. Many of these stratojets and stratofortresses had also managed to evade interception and launch simulated nuclear attacks, but not at the kind of success rate that the Vulcans enjoyed. In two massive exercises of eight Vulcans that attacked on each occasion, seven had got through to their targets, an astounding survival rate against the huge might of the US air defenses. The Vulcans showed that with the right aircraft, America could be laid wide open to a nation-ending assault, something which the Soviet Union would have been very interested in. 
Fortunately for all concerned, the relationship between Britain and the United States never changed from special to decidedly antagonistic, and the Vulcans never came in anger. The American government also tried to make damn sure that nobody ever found out about the Vulcans nuking American cities. The US Air Force was very quick to deny rumors that RAF planes had once again successfully penetrated US airspace. In fact, the US government went so far as to classify all references to Vulcans included in the Sky Shield exercises. After all, if the RAF could practice nuke New York City, Washington DC, and even Chicago, the Soviets could do the same, if they could develop an aircraft as good as the Vulcan. As far as strategic air command was concerned, the Vulcan episodes had never happened, and the US was well protected, and that protection, as I said, 99% effective. The Vulcans' successful attacks on America were only fully declassified in 1997, long after the Vulcan had left British service. Many thanks for watching. Wow. Wow. The Vulcan X, um, six, one, two. Yes, ma'am. Are you guys serious? Yes, ma'am. Here you are. <gasps> Ooh, look at you. something guys can you imagine that you got it it got through the first time yeah and you did it a year later and you don't even say okay let me see how I can adjust or how I, I can fix this because they jammed us or or what can we make within that year that that is just crazy that is you don't learn from the first mistake and it happened a second time and you went ahead and you hid it and giving your country this false sense of hope. I understand that you couldn't say, if you think about it long and hard, I understand that you couldn't say, okay, this happened because your enemies would be aware. But you don't even try to make, why? Can you imagine that? Sitting ducks. Back then, like sitting ducks. <laughs> Wow. Happy that we're allies. Happy that we're friends. Because guess what? <laughs> but but in trouble. <laughs> and stay at friends. Of course. Wow. Thank you for requesting this one. Hope you guys enjoy. Don't forget to do what? Go in the comment section. Tell me what you'd like me to react to next because it will be done. It's your island girl and these are so much eye openers. And I'm running out of here. Say bye, Bambi. Love you guys and I'll catch you guys in another video. Bye. She's watching her ABCs, guys. She's not, <laughs> she's not paying you any mind.